you need outside help. You need a, like a business manager or a sponsor or something who's going to come in and say, this is, you don't need a, a jaw, a jaw muscle exerciser. <laughs> Subscribe! What's up? Looking What's up, Maximilian? Hand- handsome as fuck, man. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Are you Maximilian? No. No, just no, straight just Max? Max. I was supposed to be Maximilian. Oh, wait, are we don't have a video? Yeah. Hold well, on, I got to sit on a pillow. <laughs> there I ask why? Should be, should be okay. Well, I'm on the floor I'm with my dog, and uh, my ass is starting to fall asleep. <laughs> <laughs> so, wait, you're, 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 you're going to subject yourself to the pillow and the ass falling asleep just so you're on the ground with the dog? Like, do you do that at all times? Because the dog's always on the ground, bro. Yeah, so, like... You just is, is like, he or she sick? No, he's just my best friend, and uh, you know. <laughs> but like, all right, so like you, wanna... you walk in a room and there's like a couch and chairs and TVs on, and like the dogs on the floor. You're always getting on the floor with them. If no one else is home, maybe yeah. Yeah, that's very nice of you. That's you're, really you're nice. You're a very sweet, nice dog owner. Yeah, if no one else is home, and he feels like. He's alone. I don't want him to feel like we're at different levels. We're at the same level. Yeah, but okay, like, I mean, can, like, I, can I pitch an idea, Max? Why don't you let him well, on the furniture? On. I, we, I've done that before, but I'm in a room where there's there's no place where he can sit. He'll oh. sit on the couch and be with games. This is a very strange room. What's going on <laughs> in this room here? We've got a TV on the wall off to the side. you got a stray chair facing this way. What room is this? That's a bed. That's a bed. Oh, it comes okay. out of the- A Murphy bed, they call it. I know. That's right. That's right. That's right. Um, okay. Is that an active fireplace? Sure is. Fucking love fireplaces, man. <laughs> I'm a huge fireplace guy, right? I mean, to me, like, I, we used to get, uh, we would, my dad would always get those Duraflame logs, and uh, we would do it, like, I think we would have, we would have fires, like, Almost all year round. Like maybe August we'd take off. Otherwise, there was a fire roaring in my house every single night. Can I, can I ask you something? I love a fire, and we do fires often. Every time I light the fire, I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to explode. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually – I'm better with fire. Every time I plug things in, I think I'm going to explode. <laughs> Like, when like you, you're charging you, your phone, like, when you zow. no, like if I put it into the wall outlet, yes, yeah, I get yeah. very scared. I am calm. I'm very confident. I'm going to get electrocuted and explode because you I, I see like those blue lights all the time. Yeah, that little spark, that little blue spark. I'm like, one day that's going to get me. Yeah. Like that's that. I don't let enough fires to be scared of that, but I am terrified of plugging things into the wall. I hate it. I hate it. Really? <laughs> that's a crazy irrational fear. <laughs> yeah, that and dish and uh, garbage disposal is terrified of. You're just gonna get sucked in or something. I, oh, I always think I forgot something in it and it's gonna fire out at me. Forgot? Oh, I forgot my uh, my <laughs> phone and my. And my- <laughs> yeah, I think I, I like. Oh, there might be a fork that slipped, like a baby fork or like a screw. Something slipped down there and it's gonna come out. Him, dude. If I if I was designing a house, I would put the the garbage disposal switch on the other side of the kitchen. That's actually not a bad idea. It is kind of scary. Be like, let me. It's almost like when you get an X-ray at the dentist, and you gotta like go outside yeah, yeah. before you push the button. Max is like, "What the fuck is going on right now?" This has got to definitely well, be the I'm, weirdest I'm, interview of the day. I'm off with this. Is this is where I want to live now? <laughs> Although I'm really trying to visual. Well, you you set a lot of things up for me to think about and visualize, and now. I'm, well, if we put the switch <laughs> over on the other wall, what does that really, like, what does that mean? It means what? I can't get hit when yeah, things come flying out. Shit flies out. It's like, I'm on the other side of the room. Well, I know. <laughs> I'm trying to, I'm thinking about it logistically now, and I'm like, well, that means we got to run a line. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and it means a lot of people are going to be accidentally turned on the garbage disposal. <laughs> Yeah. Like I thought this Look was the, the fucking light for the bathroom, dude. Yeah. Yeah. No, 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 it's the garbage disposal. You're gonna be in your bedroom upstairs flipping a switch to do the garbage disposal. <laughs> yeah, let me you know what? I'm gonna give you a counter argument. <laughs> you bring it up at an interesting point. Because with it close, at least you're the one who's in control of it. Right. All of a sudden oh. you're, you're pull some shit out 
and your son is like, let me turn the lights yeah. on. You're like, wait a minute, that's not the lights. And then your hand is gone. You could have your face in that thing and little John Jr.'s like, flip, and you're dead. Guess what, Max? Great car argument. I'm not one of those people who stick to my guns. <laughs> I'm, I'm done. Never mind. Garbage. <laughs> the switch stays by the garbage disposal. <laughs> I don't fucking care. I'm not going to sit here and argue. You made a better point. You win. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I, I wish somebody that. would do that on I wish somebody would have that reaction on Shark Tank where they were just like this. I fucked up. I don't know what to tell you. You know what? Uh, you know what? Uh, 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 Mark Cuban, you're right. My yeah. product sucks. Yeah, you're right. You it's nailed terrible. it. Good idea. Aside from, you know, they turn red and they try to stick with it. And it's like, well, no, actually. The, um, and instead, I wish they would go, yeah, uh, you, 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 you poked a giant hole in everything I've worked in 10 years. I'm I'm thrilled that I don't have to give it one more ounce of thought because it's over now. You're right. I didn't see it the whole time. It was right there. Man, it's exceptionally impractical. Hey, why would someone want a human-sized protein shaker? Like, I, I, that's why I would be a horrible ju- uh, shark, they call it, on Shark Tank. Because I wouldn't have the heart to be like, sir, you have wasted all of your money. And the majority of your life on this idea that I am going to show you why it's completely useless. That I don't have the heart to do. American Idol, I think it's like, you know, listen, sorry. You know, your dream's not going to happen. But this is like, you've already, you've already ruined your life over this dumb product, sir. That's tough. <laughs> <laughs> to be the Simon Cowell of Shark Tank, you are ruining lives. Yeah. I'm not going to be the one to tell you you failed. <laughs> your mom will tell you in a couple more years after she runs out of rent money. <laughs> Oh my god, it's great. Uh, You, though, on the other hand, have been this uh, successful entrepreneur kind of diving into the um, children's realm where, like, I'll be honest, it's it's somewhere I think I've always said when I retire from doing what I do here, I would love to get into that game. I think it's, first of all, really fun, and I think it can be incredibly lucrative. I hope it's going well for you. Well, you know, I mean... I'm an author now. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly, man. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's uh, you can check that box, man. No one can take that away from you. I don't want to read this book. It's also no, the perfect like, title. It, it all came about in a way that, and, and it's why I, I genuinely am so proud of this thing. You know, as an actor, I, I, I'll jump into other people's projects and you're of service to those things and happily so. And that's where I find I'm most comfortable. Um, and this was brought to me during the craziness of lockdown and the pandemic. And I was doing those videos with my daughter on Instagram and somebody had asked, somebody had asked me and they were like, hey, do you want to do a podcast? And I go, because they were like, we think this is something. And I was like, um, unless you want long pauses where I'm trying to like find a word or put a bunch of words together because I think they might make sense that way, um, a podcast is probably not the best place for me. Um, unless you want to talk about garbage disposals. For the first time. Yeah, Max, you're just describing our podcast. <laughs> like, like, yeah, yeah, that's why You'd be surprised, Max. With, with You'd be silent. surprised what works, man. <laughs> well, I will say this, but you, I'm sure you guys don't wouldn't for the next, I don't know, week or two weeks think about, oh, man, I, I shouldn't have talked about garbage disposal. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I'm, I'm going to be upset we talked about it too little, but, but yeah. <laughs> I, mean, might, I, mean, I had well, 10 more minutes of garbage talk. We, we might rebrand the whole podcast. <laughs> this is just an official garbage disposal <laughs> podcast now. Every single week we talk about the ups and downs of having a garbage disposal. <laughs> it, it, but, but, I, I, but in all seriousness, it is bizarre what works because, you know. Uh, totally. Like, you know. So th- they, they, but they, so, you know, when I, when I passed on the podcast <laughs> idea, I, um, uh, uh, the idea of writing a book came about, and I and I, and I said a real book, and they go, yeah. I go, no, no, no. Niente, no, no. It's gonna take me forever. I'll get halfway through and I'll quit. I know yeah, it. Yeah. Um, and then um, this idea of a children's book came up, and uh, I have read so many children's book or tried to read so many children's book to my kids that I thought. 
I could wrap my head around that. Mm -hmm. And that afternoon sort of just very organically thought, well, you know, if I was going to write one, it would be to substitute the 30 minutes I spend every night with my kids going over all the books that they have in their room mm -hmm. and them telling me why they don't want to read each one. Of them. <laughs> and you can put that into a book and call it, I don't want to read this book. Maybe they would read that one <laughs> because after I'm done fighting with them, it's time for them to go to bed and we haven't read a book. <laughs> um, so I pitched them this idea. I pitched my agent this idea and, and, and he was like, can I take it out? And I go, yeah, sure. And two days later, and a, and a day later, I was like, you know, I like that idea. It's a shame nothing will ever happen with it. <laughs> and, then, and then two days later, my agent came to me and was like, we sold it. Um, and I was like, oh, my God, do I have to write it now? <laughs> That's the worst. That's got to be the worst part. Like, fuck. Yeah. I attained my dream. <laughs> Not dream. Well, you know, I attained was, my goal. It was bad for about two minutes. And then I realized... Oh, this is not only my experience as a parent, but this is my experience as a kid mm -hmm. and, you know, a student and not wanting to read anything. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, I can write this in two minutes. And we just threw all of my experience into the book. And my daughter and I were, you know, talking about it. And I was talking about it with her friends. And this was the first thing as, a, as you know, that was different from my experience as an actor where I went, Oh, this is really, this is, this feels like my own thing. Mm -hmm. Um, and the process was so much fun and getting an illustrator, this guy, Mike Lowry came in who has all these books and just such a wonderful illustrator. He came in and brought the whole thing to life. And these things take a long time. Well, like how long, year. how long? How long like were you? Was yeah, Max Greenfield part. putting pen to paper? A oh, very short. 45, <laughs> 45 minutes. An afternoon. Yeah, very short. Three, three, three days top. And <laughs> Amazing. That's like that motherfucker. That's like when Jimmy Fallon did his dad dad book. You know what I'm talking about? Mm hmm. I mean, he made like probably like tens of millions of dollars. Every single page just says dad. dad. I don't think, I don't, one, I don't think he made tens of millions of dollars. Let's find out. Let's find out. But at least you wrote, but, you know, that was, that was some more shit. Cause Jimmy just wrote dad down every page. Um, but yeah. So, and then you go through notes and everything and then, but it was, it, it was the best and it, and it really, it came out in a way where you felt proud of it. And um, I think maybe we're going to do a couple more of these. Oh, um, whoa. It's a big drop. Is it going to be called? I, I also don't want to read this book. Yeah. I, I don't, don't, I don't read that. Book I, don't either. I don't read this book either. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's yeah. what it is. <laughs> um, Listen, all I'm just saying yeah, real man. quick is that Jimmy had a box set of mama and dad, dad, that were both number one bestsellers on the New York Times list. That's twenty five dollars. I'm sure he made a decent <laughs> decent amount of coin. Okay, I'm sure you're doing pretty good too. <laughs> well, look, that's why I'm here, man. We gotta get it. To, we gotta get it on that New York Times bestseller. Well, let's I tried to buy it last night, but it's not for sale. It comes out November 9th. Boom, little, there little plug go, there. Little you can pre order it. You can pre order it. The it said in the Come description. In, in the description, it said uh, for P is it is it strictly children or is it is it like Adults can read it too, because the description said something along the lines that kind of hinted at both. Well, I like it. <laughs> um. <laughs> that speaks a lot, because guess what? I don't like most things I do. No, but you know what? There's a really important thing, and that's this part of what I would dream to do if I were, uh, ever got involved in this: making things for children that are tolerable for the parents that have to read it or be involved in it, whether it's a movie or a TV show or a song. Yeah, like Disney does with all the sex jokes. <laughs> Yeah, all the subliminal sex messages <laughs> yeah. in Disney shows. But that's uh, you yeah. know having like some some subtle humor or something that's a little bit adult is is key. If you could if you could make the book um, every time you say book, every time you read the word book in this book, you know it's I don't want to read this book, and it's all the reasons why you don't want to read a book, and it's consensus up and paragraphs are the worst, and I lose my train of thought during a paragraph. And this, 
just every time you say the word book, replace it with email. Right. And that was, that was I don't know. Yeah. But, but I Maybe just – I stop. I want to read email. I don't do the. I don't do the emails. I read more books than emails now. I'm done with email. I really. I'm, I'm off the email train too. It's crazy. It's it's wildly irresponsible. It's incredibly like irresponsible. the amount of stuff that people are like. I emailed you about that a month ago, and I'm like, oh, I don't do that anymore. Yeah. Like, who do I think I am? Like Mariah Carey or something? I don't. You don't do email. It's like a very basic form of communication. You idiot. Yeah, no, I don't do it. If you send me an email, and I have to do this and scroll. Oh. Oh my god! What do you? Th- how much time do you think you have all day? <laughs> we used to. Uh, we had a boss. Our our boss here used to uh, put everything in the subject line. So smart. Yeah, you know, it was just this has this has no body. It was called. This has no text. It was it usually was- just like you're a fucking idiot. But it was it was <laughs> effective, and at least it didn't take me much time to call I, me a fucking it idiot. Was no scrolling. It was, he was didn't have to do the polite like. Well, so I see what you tried to do here. You're a fucking idiot. Yeah. Next email. I read it. Scrolling, give me a break. Uh, I, I, you know, you come to really appreciate people, and the people that I most respect are the ones that can truncate what they're trying to tell you, get it really tight, and yeah, make it very clear. Uh, the, That's all. The worst. You know I mean, I don't. Need, I, I don't. I don't. I don't need any like decoration around it. Yeah. Just tell me what. <laughs> the, the amount of uh, of double talk and like re-explaining, you know, when you read like three sentences in a row and they all just describe the same thing. It's like, we didn't need to do that three yeah. times, man. Or the stories, the people telling stories. Uh, so last week, no, 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 it was two weeks ago. No, wait, I think it was Tuesday. It was Wednesday. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what day it was because I wasn't there. Just tell me the fucking story. That's, we just got to get rid of that as a people. <laughs> I, I have a question for you, Max, with your I was just saying to Kevin before this. I was like, I was like, I gotta get my Instagram stories under control. Because not my Instagram stories, my Instagram ads. Because and I feel like this is probably a, a problem someone with money runs into more often than someone like me. But my ads have gotten smarter, so they keep just hitting me with more expensive things. Like it used to be, I used to get like $14 shirts, and I was like, I'd I'd buy a couple of $14 shirts. And now like this morning, I bought a three hundred fifty dollar corduroy shirt. Todd Snyder? No, it wasn't Todd mm-hmm. Snyder. They won really up good. me from my Todd Snyder. Mm-hmm. Now I'm on some other company I haven't even heard of before because I spent too much time buying Todd Snyder stuff. And it is, I feel like it's it's an issue that you must have as well because you have money. No, I, <laughs> at no point have I been like. I need a three hundred and fifty dollar quarter inch. Neither have I, Max. This is my point. This is <laughs> what, at what no is, point have I thought that. What is your uh, what is a what is a what is, a, what is a, what is a rich guy's targeted ads look like? Well, hold on, hold on. Let's break. Is your hat quarter inch? Yeah. yeah, I got a lot of quarter right now. It's the phone just he, knows. He's going through a quarter inch phase. I don't. I don't think. I don't think the problem is the ads or your Instagram. <laughs> I think you're in a problem with quartering. Right <laughs> I don't think so. I mean, you are 100 percent right. I think it's impossible to have a problem with corduroy. I think, I think, I think you guys are the one with a problem with corduroy. You don't, the fact you don't have enough corduroy. <laughs> I think your problem is corduroy. <laughs> Look how upset you're getting, <laughs> dude. He came in a week ago. He has a pair of corduroy. I I like. I actually like corduroy. I bought a Todd Snyder corduroy shirt. It wasn't quite. It was like it was like one hundred and seventy eight dollars. <laughs> but whatever. Uh, he came in with a pair of corduroy pants. No other way to describe it other than enormous. These pants were enormous. <laughs> the legs of the pants were huge. Max, however much corduroy you think was on these pants, it was at least triple. Just, just imagine like someone in the factory just like pulling like <laughs> reams of corduroy out and just slicing it, and there's your leg. It was insane how big these were, and they were wide leg. They didn't taper at all. The kid is just <laughs> drowning in corduroy. Right I, now. I actually think like they're from they're from Noah. And I think they're like they're called like the Noah. You shouldn't buy these pants. There's way too much corduroy in them pants. <laughs> they're huge, <laughs> huge. I tell you, Max has like no idea what's going on. This we are just ranting about our own shortcomings, and he's just like, okay. I think I have a pretty clear idea what's going on. <laughs> oh. I, I don't. I don't think that this is a corduroy thing. I don't think this is strictly a corduroy thing. I would guess that you probably have what we call phases 
mm-hmm. and where you're like, you're going through a corduroy phase and I'm going to spend upwards of three to $4,000 <laughs> in the span of, I don't know, six months on several corduroy pieces that I feel like I need to own mm-hmm. because going forward, I know the corduroy is going to be with me for the rest of my life. <laughs> and then a year from now, when you're like, I can't even look at corduroy. I, I, this is, what do I have all this shit for? And you're, you're on to fucking denim or whatever you're going to wear that. Where you're like, I don't know denim or denim is in. <laughs> I, I currently own six you're pairs all, of corduroy I, pants. You have, I don't even know I'm going to six pairs of pants. Do you have like one of those denim uh, uh, Shawshank outfits? Of course, Max. <laughs> you know, like where it's Max, like a really broad denim. Max, did you hear about the corduroy pants? Yeah, I got denim Shawshank outfits. I got denim Shawshank outfits out the wazoo. <laughs> <laughs> I got so much denim. I got so much corduroy. Max, I have, I have, I don't have a corduroy problem. I don't have a denim problem. I have an Instagram problem, yeah. and I have Instagram's targeted ads are they're one up me. You okay? Uh, this is yeah. this is the confession I I gotta make is that I just bought, and this is this is an attempt to like I wasn't thinking it at the time, but now that I'm looking at Max, I'm just trying to look like Max. <laughs> I bought a fucking. Uh, a a jaw muscle exerciser to improve no no oh. i chew it i chew it and uh it's i'll, I'll show you the thing it is <laughs> no man are you are you working out like your this muscle like yeah like right muscle? there why you're, would you're, you oh to get a better jaw yeah because you have a fucking outstanding jaw yeah. answer and the scruff you have is really like unparalleled and that almost looks like fake. Like if you were to draw a cartoon character to be like, let's give him a good jaw and great scruff, it would be Max. It's I, I, we're gonna bleep the name because we're not giving any free ads, but it's from a it's from a company called. Ch- oh, and God. it's just it's just you chew things. It's like it's like it's called Tough Bite. I just put that in my mouth and chew it. I could have bought a pack of gum instead. I bought a uh, I forget what it was. It was like eighty bucks or something like that. Eighty dollars for a, a jaw chisel enhancer. This is a, this is one of the well, dumbest one things of I've ever. The first thing you said was one of the first things you said in a question that you had for me um, was <laughs> it, you phrased it as somebody who, as somebody who doesn't have any money. I want to ask this question. I think we know why you don't have any money. <laughs> <laughs> is it, I, I, I'm like Michael Scott when when Oscar's breaking down like and this bar is for things nobody needs and it's just I think you, you need you need outside help you need a, like a business manager or a sponsor or something who's going to come in and say this I, I, is you don't need a, a jaw a jaw muscle exerciser <laughs> I mean, I do. I have a round face. I have a, I have a baseball face. I need a jaw exerciser. And if this thing works, it's the greatest invention of all time. Can I? Can there's I just, just no chance it works. Can I read you guys a couple descriptions? Because there's light, regular, and yeah. and tough. So the light one says your chisel journey begi- just starts here. If you can't decide what model to get, don't second guess it. Go for the light bite. Okay, so that's like the first one. It'll I think help that's you. the one I got. That's that's for the that's for babies. Okay, that's that's <laughs> chump shit. Uh, then he says, elevate your chisel program with the new level with this great fatigue booster. It will help you achieve your jawline definition. Uh, it's a great addition to your arsenal. And then my favorite here for this is called the tough bite. It's the final boss of your <laughs> chisel journey. <laughs> it, says, it says, listen to this and, 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 and don't, don't be, don't be careless with this. It might be tempting to grab the sleek black tough version from the start. But don't expect to get better or faster results. You need to. <laughs> you I'm, need not, to I'm not a fool. I didn't need to come prepared. I mean, I can't even believe this is a thing, and that you're doing. I am begging you to stop, <laughs> <laughs> Max. You, you make. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You make your living talking to a microphone. Can you imagine what an asshole you're going to look like when you go? I can't I can't wow. talk to because I hurt myself. I have an injury from my 
from the fucking raw bone or whatever you call it. What was it called? <laughs> chisel. Chisel bite. Chisel, chisel bite. And, and guess what? It, I also, I already have jaw issues. I have TMJ. Oh, you should hear me eat a bagel. It's a fucking nightmare. It's just <laughs> a lot of cracking. Can you imagine? I can't, I can't come into it. Wait, that was, was that I'm it? At, that's, yeah, it's my jaw. I don't, I, I don't know if you can hear because it it's on Zoom. Do that again because with the... With, Oh my god, that's haunting. That yeah. is haunting yeah, through you, the headphones. You oh should see god. that thing trying to fucking wolf down and everything bag. Oh. It is a nightmare. Holy <laughs> moly. It's horrible to be in the same room as me when this I This is dangerous. <laughs> this is By the way, eating an everything bagel is probably a better workout for your job than just, the thing that you just bought. do that, <laughs> fat boy. <laughs> Try to avoid the carbs, Max. I gotta get a toned jaw. Can't get a toned jaw when I'm having a loaf of bread every morning. <laughs> What do you mm. think is the dumbest uh, piece of clothing you own or accessory or something oh. like that you look back on? Are you like, holy shit, I can't believe I wore that? Uh, I mean, there's been there's been a lot of pieces. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, God almighty. The dumbest. I'm trying to think of. The I, I'm actually now that we're thinking <laughs> of your dumbest clothes. The uh, the line. One of my favorite, not one of my favorite lines. There's so many of my favorite lines in New Girl. But when you have the only suit you get left is the one with the lightning bolt. I think you said you look like a Ukrainian dentist. <laughs> when uh, the when when Jess has to, like fake the robbery, and it's like oh, I have a little Ukrainian dentist in this. <laughs> I don't know why that kills me. <laughs> There's so many good lines from that man. That, that. As I got, as I've gotten older, I've just like my clothes have gotten plainer and simpler. Yeah, and I, those are the ones I really like. And every time I've gone to a store and thought, I'm gonna take a risk. Mm-hmm. The dumbest, it's the dumbest thing I've ever never had. works I mean, out. There are certain people who have like a yeah. knack for it, like they can just see it, and it might be silly, but they're like ahead of the curve. I'm not one of those guys. It's like yeah. if I if I venture outside yeah. of my comfort zone of like blue, like I go like white, black, gray, and like if I do a blue, that's a big day. Otherwise, I go outside of that, I'm in trouble, man. Yeah, even with the sneakers, like you know. I can look at a pair of sneakers and go, those are cool. Mm-hmm. As soon as I put those on myself, I go, I can't wear these. I look like an idiot. It's tough. The sneakers are tough. I have I have a sneaker itch. And I remember one guy telling me, uh, I started buying sneakers when I got a little bit of money. I bought all the basketball shoes and sneakers from my past that I either couldn't afford or my mom wouldn't buy me, all these throwbacks. And I had a guy being like, I went through the same phase you went through. You're going to you're gonna turn around like next year. And look at like, this whole collection and be like, what have I, what the fuck have I been doing? And I was like, no, man, no way. Not me, man. I love this shit. And it took a little bit longer, but now I look, I'm like, what am I going to do with all these dumb ass sneakers, man? <laughs> <laughs> and, then when, and then you buy a nice pair of sneakers, they get dirty, and it's like, well, forget it. <laughs> <laughs> the, the sneaker culture, which I think is, is I, I don't know if it's toned down or not. Maybe it's just like personal. Like, but when people are like, you can't bend your toes in the shoes, it'll oh, crease them. Nuts. Like, I can't. What are we talking about now? It's it, it, it's a sickness, man. Those people. You find you have the same problem with, uh, or at least in the beginning, with the corduroy. <laughs> yeah. I was I was nervous to get it tailored. I was like, "Be gentle when you cut it, sir, please." <laughs> <laughs> man, this is one of the, this is one for the record books. This is as stupid as it gets. I, do, uh, on a serious note, did you feel um, that you know you, you you had this viral moment with your daughter? And everybody loved it. And we now- had many viral moments, and I, I hated every single one of them because <laughs> they all were like the hot dad, cool kid. Maybe that could be me, and it's just not going to be me. No, not going to be you. It's dude. just not going to be me. Not going to be you. Not without that corduroy. <laughs> well, you know, because an Instagram ad is going to catch your attention, and the next <laughs> thing you know, you're like, "Hold on, honey, I've got to work out my jaw." <laughs> Baby, let's conceive. Not tonight. I'm tired from jaw working out. <laughs> but I, I feel like um, it's got to be cool to like, you know, you're working so, in some ways directly with your daughter. But even just doing something in, in like the children's realm, it's it's just, I don't know. I feel like in, in the, the Internet can be such a mean place and a tough place and uh, Hollywood's cutthroat and all this kind of shit. And while I'm sure what you're doing is still, you know, obviously a business, I, there just has to be an element of it that's, 
I don't know, a little lighter, a little like happier, more wholesome, all that kind of stuff? Yeah, well, what's nice is, you know, you go from New Girl and, and where you're like essentially playing a douche the whole time. Right. Whatever, you're playing this wild <laughs> yeah. guy. Yeah. And, and then I often get cast like in offsets of that where it's like, you know, is the asshole in promising young woman or the asshole? I mean, in this you are an all time people. asshole in promising young woman <laughs> and all times come back. Yeah. Like the guy in the big short and all that. Stuff. And so, like, at some point you go, this doesn't match up with my real life at all. <laughs> and I love, you know, I'm like getting dragged around by two kids all day long. And when you're able to participate in things that you really have experience with and that are closer to the life that you're leading, it just makes, it makes more sense. Right. And it feels organic and it feels real. And it's easy then to talk about it as well. Um, Cause then you have to do, you know, press for it and you have to get out there and discuss what it is that you're working on. And when you're like, this is a crazy thing that I'm doing. Um, you're just sort of, talking about the story and the experience working with it but you know when, when you write a children's book and 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 or you play a father or you're part of like some of this some of the family content that uh i've been lucky enough to be able to do over the past couple of years it's really rewarding and because you can speak to it on an honest organic level right that that to me is what i i feel like it you know, shows a different side that, you know, maybe uh, people don't know about or, you know, it's like it just feels more rewarding, if you will, than, you know, you've been kind of playing um, the douchebag and like over here, we just are the douchebags. There's not like a, a character to it. It's just like, oh, that's the other side of, of daddy kids. But um, <laughs> but I, yeah, I think that's got to be a cool way to, you know, have a, a, another uh, portion of your career while while, you know, acting still thriving. What, onto season four of of the neighborhood yeah i mean that's solid too you know that's another that's another great like sitcom you hit. went right from new girl to that right like that there wasn't much of a gap at all was there none i'm trying to stay on tv forever <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just hit sitcom to hit sitcom yeah decent. well i think it's going to be tough to get on another one so the idea is when this sort of starts to find its way down or, or, and, and I'm going to, uh, I think I got to jump on one of those like NCIS shows. Or something. Oh, yeah. Oh, get on that procedural money, LL man. Cool J. I'll kill, <laughs> I'll kill Chris O'Donnell. You can, you know, <laughs> I'll get a weapon out of that for sure. <laughs> well, that's great, man. We're getting the, the signal to wrap it up. I think your people are like, we can't talk about Corduroy anymore. You got to go. <laughs> so, uh, we appreciate the time. Uh, so like we said, uh, season four of the neighborhood, but the book, is out i don't want to read this book uh and as always we appreciate the time man thank you max yeah thank you guys for having me you guys are so great um and so supportive i really appreciate it have thank a good one man catch you later all right the holiday season is approaching all i want for christmas this year is youtube subscribers we Please. got we got to get to a hundred thousand i want Please, that hundred thousand these plaque. subscribers uh, we've got a goal for uh, for all you out there, for everybody. At 100,000 subscribers, Polly Feidelberg will join us on the show, maybe. Well, if not, we'll probably have to trick her into it. But at 100K, you will get Polly content. So subscribe. Click the bell uh, icon so you get notifications so that you're always watching. Leave a comment below. Talk about it. Post about it. Spread word. Tell your friends. Tell your friends. 100,000 subscribers on KFC Radio for Polly Feidelberg. Let's make it happen.